Amen. But pneumonia is no joke. Thank God. I told you. I was telling Mr. Brockton. Amen. I said, yes, Mr. Brockton, I got back. I got pneumonia. She said, oh, my Lord. You went all the way to Alabama to get COVID. I said, no, no, no. I didn't say COVID. I, I said pneumonia. No. Thank God for the presence. <laughs> amen. I thank God for bringing us through this. Some people who have had pneumonia who never, amen, recovered. Pneumonia, amen, your, your, your lungs are, amen, uh, restricted. Amen. Filled with mucus and your whole body shuts down. Thank God for a praying church. Thank God for a praying wife. Amen. I thank God that she didn't, amen, that she didn't just say, well, take the bottle of night quill and just be on your way. Amen. I used to be like that. Amen. Every problem I had, headache, toothache, toe ache, heartache, night quill. <laughs> amen. Amen. So the, the red or the green one didn't matter then. Colors is dying. Amen. But nevertheless, we thank, we praise God. God brought me through. And I feel good down in my sanctified soul. Amen. Thank God for the church. Amen. For Elder Brown. Amen. And the saints, Brother Tucker, Elder uh, Marcel. Amen. Others, Brother George. Amen. Evangelist, everyone that's, amen, that held it together. Amen. I don't think if. I think if the pastor's not feeling well, if he's not there, I don't think the church should just fall apart. Because if the church falls apart, that's a, a prime example of poor leadership. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Pastor's job, at least what we've tried to do, was prepare everybody, amen, to be leaders. Amen. That when one of us, amen, may happen to, uh, amen, get sick or weary or something may happen, Amen. The church goes on. Because the ministry is not built on one individual. Amen. The church is built on Christ. And on Christ, solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Please excuse me. This is a kind of annoying me. Amen. All of the ground is sinking sand. Amen. So we thank and we pray God we're still here. Yeah. Amen. I said we're still here. Yeah, right. Amen. Anarchy didn't rise up. Yeah. Amen. The, the miracle man from out of town didn't come and try to sweep the members away. Oh. Amen. Oh, no. Amen. God has kept us. Yeah, yeah. And for these things we're thankful. Can we tell the Lord thank you? Thank you. Lord. Tell him thank you. Thank you. Amen. So we thank and we praise God today. Amen for blessing us to be here. Now, uh, I promised that I would, amen, well, I said I would talk, just talk today. Amen. I don't know if I promised it. Amen. But I said it. Amen. So bear with me. We're going to the book of Deuteronomy, the second chapter. Sometimes, you know, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know any, any human being that's comfortable with sitting at home and they're able to work, but just sitting at home, something wrong with you. I was home, amen, I thank God being around my family, but I, I was home and I, I got antsy because I'm not used to just sitting there and laying down, but I had to lay down and rest. There are some people that are well able body in their bodies. I'm not talking about those who have retired. I'm not talking about those who have worked and labored through the years. I'm not even talking about, amen, the one who got their legs cut off. Amen, I'm talking about, there are folks that will not work. As a matter of fact, they wouldn't get a job in a pie factory tasting the best pies. Because they'll come up with an excuse of why they can't work in the pie factory. Well, Mother Tucker, they make me stand all day while the pies go by and I taste them. Supervisor says, I'll give you a chair to sit in. 
I still don't want to work in the chair. It's, it's, it's too, it sits too high. Well, I'll give you a chair a little lower. I don't want to work still because the chair is just a little low and I gotta reach to grab the presentation. The chair don't got cushion on it. It don't got enough cushion. It got too much cushion. The temperature's too cold, it's too hot. Every excuse <laughs> but to do the right thing. I don't understand, maybe something wrong with me. You know, because I did fall on my head when I was four years old. Amen. They said I wasn't wrapped too tight. Amen. But maybe something wrong with me. If you're able-bodied in your body and you can work, if you're not a mother with five or six kids at home taking care of your children, or if you're not invalid and you can't move, or if, my God, if you're not sick with pneumonia or something and have to be bedridden, if you're able-bodied to work, something is wrong with you if you don't work. The Bible said if man don't work, he don't eat. Amen. I mean, even the first man, Adam, had a job. Amen. He didn't. <laughs> My God. My God. He had a job in the garden. He had to till the garden. Thank you, Lord. I mean, come on now. So I, I, I was sitting home. I said, Lord, I can't wait till I can get out of this house. My God, I didn't watch, I didn't watch the Clark sisters uh, time over and over and over and over. I can tell you the beginning and the end of that. Amen. I didn't watch Color Purple over and over and over and over again. Amen. I didn't listen to, <laughs> I didn't listen to all the gospel music I can listen to. I said, I got to move. It's not normal for a man to be idle. Right. Idle, just idle. The Bible says the idle mind is the devil's workshop. Why is the idle mind the devil's workshop? Because if you sit there, and the devil will give you something to do. Can we tell the Lord thank you? I mean, everything God created was not created to just sit there and just merely exist. Take the tree, for example. The tree moved. It needs a little help, but it still moves. The tree does its job in the spring and in the autumn and in the fall. It, it still has a job to do. The tree lodges the fowls of the air. The roots of the tree go into the ground. Amen. A tree has a job to do. And most, some of these trees are over 200 years old. Well, they just sit in the same spot, but they're doing something while they're sitting there. Tell the Lord, thank you. thank you. Hallelujah. As my God, as miserable, as miserable and as wretched as a cockroach is, a cockroach works. As a matter of fact, they got scalp cockroaches. Cockroaches. You know what a scalp cockroach is? I mean, they go out and look for the food. And then when they find a nasty house, they go there. And then they stop the land. And then they go get their buddies. They say, it's banquet time. Come over here with a table to spread. The Lord has provided and we are thankful. And when they get there, it's hard to get them out. Because the cockroach is attracted by nastiness, moisture, food, and filth. Can we tell the Lord thank you? And most of the time, if, you're, if, if the house is pretty much overrun by cockroaches, you can't get rid of them. You gotta tear the house down. And dig out, because the cockroaches are underground too. Tell the Lord thank you. Amen. Lazy and shiftless. That is not the way of holiness. Amen? My God, I don't know. I said, I got to get out of this house. So I thank God. The Lord made a way for me to get out of the house. And then the children missed the bus maybe two or three times. So I had to take them to school. It was good to get out and just drive. It's not normal to be confined. I think that's 
what I'm trying to get at. It's not normal to be confined and just idle. And if an individual is in that condition, that is a wretched condition because you're merely just existing. My God. Day after day, the same thing, mediocrity, going in circles. They call it, this song they says cycles. Cycle, just going in cycles. The same, same cycle. That's not what God would require of us. That's not even, well, Deuteronomy, the second chapter. I guess it is part of the message. Let's start at the second verse. And the Lord spake unto me, saying, Ye have compassed this mountain long enough. Turn you northward. And command thou the people, saying, Ye are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of Esau, which dwell in Seir. And they shall be afraid of you. Take ye good heed unto yourselves, therefore. Meddle not with them, for I will not give you of their land, no, not so much as a footprint, because I have given Mount Seir unto Esau for possession. Ye shall buy meat of them for money, that ye may eat, and ye shall also buy water of them for money, that ye may drink. For the Lord thy God hath blessed thee in all the works of thy hand. He knoweth thy walking through this great wilderness, these forty years the Lord thy God hath been with thee. Thou hast lacked nothing. And when we passed by from our brethren the children of Esau, which dwell in Seir, through the way of the plain from Eleph, and from Zion, Gabriel, uh -huh, we turned and passed by the way of the wilderness of Moab. And the Lord said unto me, Distress not the Moabites, Neither contend with them in battle, for I will not give thee of their land for a possession, because I have given R unto the children of Lot for a possession. The Emims dwelt therein in times past, and people a people great and many, and tall as the Anakims, which also were accounted giants. As the Anakims, but the Moabites call them the Emims. The Horims also dwelt in Seir before time, but the children of Esau succeeded them when they had uh -huh, destroyed them from before them and dwelt in their stead. As Israel did unto the land of his possession, which the Lord gave unto them. 13th verse says, Now rise up, said I, and get you over the brook Zireh. And we went over the brook Zeman. The third verse says, Ye have compassed this mountain long enough. Turn you northward. Amen. As we look at this scripture, it kind of goes with my, I guess, prologue, if you want to call it, what we were saying. Uh, the children of Israel, amen, after God delivered them from a cruel and harsh taskmaster, that Egyptian. The Egyptian who gave them, a man who made them uh, go into slavery. The Egyptian nations who, amen, the Pharaoh who rose who knew not God, who had no respect for the God of Israel, had no admiration for the God of Israel, amen, had no honor for the God of Israel, had no honor for the people of God, amen, commanded that every firstborn would be killed. Amen. Made their tasks and their jobs even that much harder by making them make brick without straw. Amen. The same uh, group of people who had the children of Israel in slavery in mind. I think someone talked about it a few weeks ago. God sent plagues in the land. And when God sent plagues in the land, the bottom line was God meant to. Amen. And God's purpose was to let his people go free. All right. All right. He said the word, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, yeah, okay. let my people go. The songwriter said, Pharaoh's heart, heart got hard. Is that right? Didn't believe in God. Amen. When it was all 
said and done. Pharaoh's army was drowned in the Red Sea. Contrary to the movie, Pharaoh didn't make it out of the Red Sea. Amen. He was like that cockroach checked into the motel. The roach motel. Remember that commercial? They gonna check in, but they ain't gonna check out. The entire host of Egypt, amen, was washed away in the Red Sea. When you remember the story, the children of Israel were chased to the banks of the Red Sea. They had a mountain on one side, mountain on the other side, mad assassin army behind them, the Egyptians, and the Red Sea in front of them. They had nowhere to go. But don't you know that God, the God that we serve, he's the God that can make a way out of nowhere. As a matter of fact, where there is no way, God will make a way. Can I get a witness? Amen. And then, uh, the word of God came to Moses and told Moses to stand still. Tell the children of Israel, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. When it was all said and done, they went through, amen, the Red Sea opened up, they went through on dry land, Pharaoh's army was gone. But then after that, after they were delivered from the enemy, the Bible says they wandered through the wilderness. A journey that would have took maybe a few weeks, took them 40 years. Why did it take them so long? I mean, you're delivered from your captor. You're not in bondage anymore physically. Matter of fact, when you were delivered, you came out with a great spoil. You didn't come out of there broke either. But you came out with a great reward. The same ones that bound you, God turned them around to bless you. Can we tell the Lord thank you? I don't know if anybody in here has ever been bound. Maybe a couple of us, amen, I mean physically bound and want to go home and camp. A few of us, amen. amen. But it's nothing like, amen, when those doors open. Before the doors open, you hear a sound. Am I right about it? You hear, bag and baggage. Time to go home. And then after you hear that, you hear the, the buzzer and the door opens up. Oh, what a glorious sound. Oh, what a blessed sound, am I right? And I don't care, it really don't matter when you're being released, you don't care what you got on, as long as you got some clothes on, but you don't care if you got a suit on, if you, don't got, if you got church shoes on, you just want to get out of where you were. Tell the Lord to thank you. But what a good feeling to be free. So as they were wandering through the wilderness, they were taken out of Egypt. But Egypt was yet, there was some Egypt within them. Uh, they began to complain. We had it better when we was in bondage. We had it better when we was getting beat and whipped and scorned and our children were being taken away from us. That is a mental and spiritual disorder. Amen? It's one thing to be free and be taken captive and be put under bondage against your own will. It's another thing to want to be under bondage. It's a big difference. Knowing the consequences of being under bondage, amen, and still desiring to be under bondage, something is wrong. Knowing that you can be free if you want to be free. Knowing that there are steps to take to be free. But so many people choose to yet be bound. It's a choice you make. That's why I don't waste too much time. If somebody tells me they don't want to be free, and they understand that they're in sin, I know I'm going to hell. They say stuff like that, and they don't want to hear nothing about the gospel. I'm not going to cast my peril before the swamp. I'm going to pray for them. Because there's too many other people who have not yet heard the gospel. That upon if they hear the glorious land of the gospel, they will receive it. Can we tell the Lord thank you? So these children of Israel were in 
a terrible condition. They were free physically, but bound spiritually and mentally. Hmm. Free physically, but bound spiritually. If you're bound spiritually, that affects everything else that you're bound by. Mentally, emotionally, amen? Thank you, Lord, because it starts in the spiritual, amen, and it carries on into the natural. But as they went on, the Bible gave us to know that God told Moses and Joshua and Caleb, amen, this group, this generation, they ain't going to make it to the promised land. Matter of fact, Moses, you're not going to make it because I gave you a strict command and you went against the command of the Lord. Amen. To much is given, much is required. Amen. But there was another generation that arose. That their hands were not dirty with the complaining of the previous. So now, here comes the word of the Lord. The Bible says, the Lord spake unto me. See, we can't do nothing without God speaking to us. You've been running around this mountain, walking around the mountain long enough. I want to say to us today, well, I'm going to ask the question. Are you tired of Aren't you tired of this mediocrity? Doing just enough to get by. As children of God, and as saints of God, the sky is the limit to what you can have. Now, I'm not telling you go out there and buy no million dollar house on a $10 an hour salary. But listen to what I'm saying. The sky is the limit to what you can have. You can only go as far as your faith allows you to. Amen. The songwriter said in the scriptures, I can do all things through who? Christ, which strengthened me. So when the Bible says I can do all things, and if faith coming by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, my faith ought to increase by what the word of God is telling me. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Ah, I, I don't have to be mediocre. I don't have to have a mediocre prayer life. I don't have to just be going through the motions and be satisfied with just a touch of God. I don't have to just I'll be blessed with if God bless me to speak in tongues and that's it. There's more to holiness and to the relationship with God than speaking in tongues. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. There's more to life than just barely making it day by day by day by day. I would that you prosper and be in good health. Even as, what? I'm not a prosperity preacher. Well-rounded as a child of God, you have to have balance. Amen. If I am constantly, constantly going to Elder Brown, going to Mother Tucker, Going to the Ventures here, going to Elder Richard, going to Elder Marcel, going to Brother George. Week after week, let me borrow $10. Let me borrow $5. Let me borrow $10. Let me borrow $5. Borrow five What's wrong with me? If somebody can come here last week and within five years, Get a business, a legitimate business, and pay rent on that business in the inner cities of this nation, and work hard, and buy a house, and support their family. What is wrong with me? I 
I'm talking natural now. If somebody on the street can come and testify with power after God delivered them, they may not be able to quote two scriptures, but they know what God did for them. And they say it with such passion. And they say it with such uh, truth and fidelity. And from the bottom of their heart, they may not even get their words together the right way, but you know what they mean. And they're grateful for what God did. If somebody can do that, who just got here, what's the matter with me? And I've been here all my life. And I got to be begged to praise God. I got to be begged to come to church. God got to work on me and convict me to even open my Bible to read. But I've been here all my life. And then you got somebody who just got here, who's growing at a more rapid state or a more rapid rate than I am spiritually because their heart is right. right. Tell the Lord, thank you. Our problem is we wander too long. Wander too long. When I came home, I said, Within a matter of a couple of years, two or three years, I want to have my own family. I mean, nothing wrong with living with your parents for a while, and they wanted me to stay. But something within me, I said, I got to have my own. I don't care if it's a studio apartment. I don't care if, my God, it's a little box. My God, I got to have my own. I, I, I don't feel right uh, depending on others like that. Hallelujah. So many people have gotten used to this dependency. Now, sometimes it's, it's necessary. When I was young, we were young kids. My mother had to depend on, and my mother was young. She had to depend on the government door. You see what I'm saying? She had to. But I'm going to tell you what Ramona did. I'm just talking about that situation. She, did, she went and got three jobs. Not only did she do that, she put herself through Rutgers. Amen. With three young children. And she taught us how to govern ourselves accordingly while we're at home by ourselves. You don't turn the stove on. You don't do this. Don't. She prepared. Amen. Because she was not satisfied with constantly depending on somebody else. Something on a... I'm not talking about if you're older and you're retired. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about if you're well and able body. Something on the inside of you ought to want to go ahead and, and go forward. But so many of us have taken that spirit of wanting to be in bondage. Like, like old Frank. I told y'all about Frank. Frank the turkey. Hey Amen. Was on the turkey farm. Thanksgiving was rolling around. Amen. Frank packed his bags. He was on his way out the farm. The other turkey, his cousin said, Frank, where you going? He said, I'm out of here, man. Frank, why are you leaving, man? We're treated so good here. We're fed with it. It's a gated community. Here. My goodness. We don't want for nothing. The, the wolves don't come in. The foxes don't come in. Yeah. My God, we're fed real good. As a matter of fact, we've been eating real good here lately around the holidays. Frank said, that's what I mean. That's what I'm talking about. You see what happened to Herbie last year? He's gone. They fed him real good. You see what happened to Robert the year before? He's gone. He said, it ain't going to happen to me. I'm out of here. 
He had his briefcase, it was halfway, it was even closed all the way, clothes hanging out of the briefcase, on his way out. Because he wanted to live. <laughs> it's a funny story, but so many of us have the mentality of the other church. <laughs> we be good. I'm all right. I'm all right sitting here. I'm all right in this. Yeah, I got I get my little bit this and that and other thing, and I just make it, and then I'll I'll, I'll scheme. I try to scheme to get a little bit out of you. And scheme to get a little bit out of you. And get a little bit out of you, get a little bit out of you. Amen, but that's not God's way. Can we tell him thank you? Thank uh, you. The word of God came. He said, all right, you've been wandering around this mountain long enough. Now is the time, what? To go northward. Go northward. Amen, north is up. Can we tell him thank you? Hallelujah. Now, God gave instruction. <coughs> Don't matter what the children of Esau, because I promised them that land. There's some things that God is going to bring us to, but we have to strategically uh, address the situation. Yeah. You follow what I'm saying? Uh, you got to know when to hold them. You got to know when to fold them. You got to know when to fight. Yeah. And you got to know when to run. Yeah. You're not a coward for running. You're wise. Yeah. Yeah. And you're not an over uh, 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 macho person for standing and fighting. Yeah. Wisdom tells me, amen, that I ought to move with the Spirit of God. Right. There are some things, some battles, that we ain't got to fight. Because they're just a mere distraction. Because we have a goal, we're trying to get to the promised land. Amen? Amen. We don't have time to be mixed up, tied up, tangled up with folks, amen, who don't mean us no good. Amen? We don't have time to be mixed up, tangled up with our own selves and our own mind telling us uh, uh, you ain't gonna make it. God gave instruction. God gave direction. God gave the plan. Uh huh. The, 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 the songwriter said, "Amen." If, if 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 Jesus don't take you to the top, then nobody can. Can we tell the Lord thank you? Thank you Lord. God is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Can I get a witness anyway? Yeah. I say, God is with us. Yeah. We've come a long way. Yeah. And, 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 and uh, along the way, sometimes it felt like we were just merely in a, a holding pattern. But being in a holding pattern doesn't mean you're being idle. Because the Bible says, stand ye therefore. Right. Stand. Stand. After that all, after you've got all to stand, stand therefore. Amen. It takes faith to stand and to wait on God. Anybody ever wait on God in here? I say it takes faith to stand and to wait on God. So much so the psalmist said, I had fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He said, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, right. and he shall strengthen thy heart. Right. Wait, I say on the Lord. But while I'm going to wait, right. I'm going to keep my hand in God's hand. Yeah. While I'm waiting, I'm going to keep my ears open. Yeah. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. God is speaking. God is giving direction. God will say, go this far and don't go any further. God will say, stand still. God will say, hold your peace. God will say, open your mouth at the appointed time. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus said, if you go, I'll go with you. Open up your mouth. He said, I'll speak for you. Hallelujah. Sometimes I don't know what to say. I don't know how to say it. But then I wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. I have enough faith to believe that at the appointed time, God will send his word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And if we ever need a word from God, 
making excuses. Stop blaming the foreigner. Stop blaming the European. Stop blaming, blaming the Haitian and the African. Amen. Look at yourself. Get up from the condition you're in. Get a job. My God. Get in touch with God. And let God fix it for you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I say, get in touch with God. Let God fix it for you. Hallelujah. The blessing of the Lord make it rich and add it no sorrow. I know, I know, I know a couple of folks. Amen. They don't retire. They still want to work. Joe Crazy sitting at home. Amen. My father retired from Johnson and Johnson as a manager. But he couldn't sit home. He went and got a bus route and started driving kids to school. He don't need the money, he just couldn't sit home. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank God for Amen. Our brother, brother George, works a full-time job. Has a family. But many, 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 many nights has come to this church and worked tirelessly, sometimes throughout the entire night. Because in his heart, he wants to see the church go on and prosper. Thank you, Lord. So are those here Suffer. Amen. On the ground, others work tirelessly, Amen. sacrificing. Amen. I said, Amen. Thank you, Lord. Spending their own money, not asking or requiring to be recompensed, just for the church to go on. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. My wife. Thank you, Lord. When we're living in Hamilton, with here at the church, we recognize a spiritual uh, dilemma here. Maybe about eight years ago, before I began the past. The Lord put on our heart to come out, you come out and go out to that church and you pray every day. Was at the church praying every day. And God told her, I'm, I'm not, and you're not praying, I'm not anointing you to pray and go on a warfare for the church, those that are here right now, for, for, for those who are coming. Do you see the fruit? And that's not all. Thank you, Lord. Many disappointments. Many heartaches. Many hard trials. Well, as the song y'all sang in the beginning, I'm a soldier, what? Yeah. In the army of the Lord. Yeah. When a soldier's on the battlefield, yeah. they don't have plush robes on. Yeah. They don't take showers every day. Yeah. Amen? They're in the mud and in the blood and in the gut. They don't even know if they're going to make it to the next minute yeah. because they're on the battlefield. Because they have a job to do. Thank you, Jesus. I'm a soldier. 